As a preface, this video is about original work by me. It's not a book report, it's not a summary of anything I've seen somewhere else. It can only be found here from me. Uh, the purpose of showing the video is to be seen, it's meant to be seen by governments and militaries that have an interest in defense and countermeasures against radar homing missiles. Uh, the reason for showing the video is to acquire contract work. It illustrates what I know and what I can do. The usual entry points for attracting this kind of work or acquiring this kind of work result, in my experience, either in theft or in rejection. They don't work. So this video is a contribution. It's not classified. They, you know, private individuals cannot classify anything. I cannot invent something and declare it to be a Canadian secret or a U.S. secret or a U.K. secret. Private industry can't classify things. So this is a contribution to the scientific knowledge in a particular area. It doesn't represent anything operational. There's, you know, a lot of work has to be done to make it come true. Uh, so that's the context of this video. And so here we go. This video is a continuation of an earlier video about AM cross -eye. So this video describes polarization cross-eye, which I invented many years ago on my own. And uh, as far as I know, no one else has ever thought of it. So polarization cross-eye is a special implementation of AM cross-eye. It works the same as AM cross-eye, except the variable attenuator in each channel is replaced by a polarization mismatch. Now for linearly polarized radars, this can be done by a mechanical rotation of the horn antenna. And during jamming, the polarization angle of the two cross-eye antennas changes according to the desired amplitude modulation waveform for each antenna, for example, a sawtooth in time, positive or negative slope. Uh, polarization cross-eye simplifies the jammer design by eliminating the variable attenuator in each channel. So it also eliminates any stray phase effects that might be caused by the attenuators I mean, assuming the implementation does not use a digital RF memory. The 180 degree phase shift in one channel can also be eliminated by using mirror image coax to waveguide adapters, but only if the system uses a separate pair of antennas for the receive channels, and if the receive channel adapters are not configured as mirror images. Otherwise, the crossover design of the array applies a 180 degree phase shift twice and the radiation pattern from the retro directive array steers a peak gain onto the incoming missile instead of a null. And that, that, that's a beacon, that's the worst thing to do. However, with the right architecture, the mirror image adapters instantly provide a broadband 180 degree phase shift between the two transmit channels as required by the retro directive design. The catch though is twofold. The receive and transmit antennas have to be co-located so the parallax between the transmit and receive arrays and the inbound missile is sufficiently small, so it stays retrodirective, and there has to be sufficient RF isolation between the receive and transmit antennas. But the, but the isolation issue is present regardless of the design, and I mean the isolation between the port and starboard sides of the array. Now, I have not studied the practicality of separate receive and transmit antennas from the point of view of multipath and other factors. That would have to be done. Or alternatively, the 180 degree phase shifter can be retained and a single pair of antennas could be used for to receive and transmit. And if the seeker is linearly polarized and if the jammer uses horn antennas, the polarization rotation might look like this for negative sawtooth amplitude modulation using the port antenna as a reference to define the sawtooth slope. And it might look like this for positive sawtooth modulation. Based on simulation results, polarization cross-eye could cause larger angle errors compared with identical modulation AM cross-eye if the AM cross-eye system uses voltage-controlled attenuators or, let's say, digital attenuators. I mean, if that's the case, then the attenuator's insertion phase could change slightly as their, their amplitude, the amplitude of each, is adjusted. And this, this wouldn't happen in back-to-back -back polarization cross-eye tests using the same test set because the attenuators aren't used. They don't, they're not needed for polarization cross-eye. So the attenuator setting isn't changed during their, uh, so their insertion phase is constant. And there's one other reason why there might be a difference between polarization cross-eye and normal AM cross-eye. The attenuation versus time profiles are different if the modulation waveform is applied to the polarization angle instead of the attenuation. Now, it'll be very easy to check if there's a difference between polarization cross-eye and AM cross-eye 
because a, an AM cross eye jammer can be converted into a polarization cross eye jammer by adding a controllable motor to each antenna. It's that simple. Now, there's more to say about polarization cross eye. For example, some viewers skilled in the art will notice that there is logically another version of polarization cross eye than I have showed. But that's better explained and illustrated in a video about double cross, so I'll leave it here for now.